about to do that. OK, you should see uh, uh, something there. I'm just going to click dismiss for that. So we're recording now. And I'm just going to get started. So I'm sharing my iPad. So it, this will probably work best if you have a copy of the questions in front of you. Um, I am going to flick uh, uh, forward and backwards to them. But um, it might be useful if you have them in front of you too. OK, so. Question 1.1. Um, so about from the very beginning, I am asking you to solve this equation for D. OK, so uh, let me just rewrite this equation uh, in my uh, OneNote. OK, so I can get rid of this now. OK, so here we go. Question 1.1. Right, so I am trying to solve 7d minus 20 uh, all over 7 equals 6d. I'm trying to solve 4d. OK. Right, so the way I would do this, there's a couple of ways you could do it, but um, I will always expand the brackets first. Um, so Right now, there are two terms <clears throat> in brackets here. We've got 7d minus 20 uh, as all over 7. So I'm going to divide each of those ter uh, terms by 7 um, and write it out like this. So it would be 7d all over 7 minus 20 over 7 equals 6d. OK, now I've got this fraction here. I've got 7d over 7. The 7s will cancel. I'm left with d minus 20 over 7. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the D terms now. Let me just write that out explicitly again. OK, what I would like to do, I would get I would like to get all the D's on one side and all of the terms without D's on the other side. OK, so uh, to do that, uh, I think I'm going to take this D over here all the way over here. Uh, so it's positive on this side. So I'm going to take it over there. It becomes negative. It's the same as subtracting D from both sides as long as you do same thing to both sides of the equation it's okay so subtract d from both left hand side and right hand side um so that's going to be so obviously d minus d is zero i'm left with the 20 over 7 equal to 60 minus d that's 20 over 7 equals to 5 D. OK, now I'm nearly there. Uh, I want just to get D on its own. I've done that right. It's minus 20 over 7. Don't forget that. There's a minus term here. OK, so it stays minus, minus 20 over 7. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the 5 in front. So I'm going to divide both sides. Right hand side by 5. OK. So if I divide this side by 5, I just get 1. OK, if I divide this side, I've got 20 over 5. Let's write it out explicitly. 20 1 over 5 over 7. So all negative equals D. 20 shared by 5 is 4. 4 minus 4 over 7 equals D. OK, that's the solution. D is minus 4 over 7. OK. Everybody happy? Just give us a just type a message that you're happy. Uh, and this is all being uh, what I'm more concerned about is that I am talking to uh, the wall here. So just I, I'm just paranoid that you can't hear me. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Brilliant. OK, right. I'll continue then. OK, any questions? You just stop me, right? Uh, so. Let's go back over here. Question 1.2. It's traditional uh, for our quantitative skills to have slugs and hedgehogs in. Um, I don't know why I inherited the module, and uh, there's always a question about slugs and hedgehogs. Okay, so what this is is it's a it's a word-based algebra problem. Um, let me read it out. There are 536 slugs in the garden. There are four hedgehogs. If one hedgehog can eat four slugs per hour, how many slugs will there be after 22 hours? So um quite a long sentence but we can reduce this to an equation which we can solve 
And what are we trying to solve here? I am trying to find out how many slugs there are going to be after 22 hours. Okay, right. Let's let's write this down in a way that we can actually apply some algebra. Okay. <clears throat> Question 1.2. Uh, right. So the first thing I want to know is the number of the first thing I've said in the question is the number of slugs there are at the very beginning. Uh, let's call that time equals zero, right? So the number of slugs at time equals zero, I'm going to call S zero, okay? And I can't remember what I said. I think it was, yep, 536. at slugs at T equals zero. Um, I'm trying to find the number of slugs at, at the time T. So these little subscripts here, this is time zero and that's time T, all right? Do we have to use algebra to answer this question? If you can do this immediately in your head, by all means, yeah, no problems. Um, and that goes the same for any question. If you can just do it and you get the right answer, that's fine. Okay, hope that answers your question. If you do it and you get it wrong, I can't give you any marks. If you do it and you get it wrong and you provided some working, then I can, I'm referring to sort of yeah, your end of year assessment now, sorry, your end of module assessment now. Um, if you do it and you show you're working and you've got it wrong, but I can see where you get, you've gone wrong, I might be able to give you some marks, even if you get the wrong answer. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm trying to find the, how number, the number of slugs there are after time t. Um, I'm going really slow, guys, here. So um, if, if this is uh, driving you bonkers, stay with me. It'll get more exciting, I promise. Um, number of hedgehogs, I'm going to call H. And the rates are at which hedgehogs eat slugs. Rates um, at which um, hedgehogs H eat S. And I'm going to call that uh, slugs per hour. OK. And I've told you that that is, what did I say? 22. R equals 22. So the important information is this and this. And also, there are n hedgehogs. So, simply to put this into words, uh, the number of hedgehogs after time t is going to be the initial number of hedgehogs minus, okay, the number of head, sorry, the number of slugs minus the number of hedgehogs times the rate at which they can eat slugs, uh, which is four. I'm just getting to ah, so I made a mistake here. This isn't twenty-two. I've said that this is four. They can eat four slugs per hour, okay? And I'm trying to find it after t equals 22. So I'll put a little subscript 22 there. It's 20, after 22 hours, um, there, there were four hedgehogs, um, and they've eaten them at the rate r, and this much time has elapsed. I'm gonna keep that as t, as like a general equation to begin with. Um, time. Okay, so if we plug these numbers in, um, S after 22 hours is equal to, what did I say, 536 minus number of hedgehogs times the rate at which they eat slugs per hour multiplied by the time. Okay, and if you plug all of that into a calculator, anyone brave enough to type the answer in? I get 184. Everyone get that answer? Anyone not get that answer? I'm going to take your silence as a thumbs up. Yep. Brilliant. Question 1.3. Okay. Oops. Right, question 
uh, a straightforward simultaneous equation. Uh, scroll, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. You can see that, right? I'll try and I'll try and start. I'll try and right in the middle of the screen. Um, I, I appreciate I'm getting to the border bottom, and I think it might cut off the bottom of the iPad. Okay, uh, I'll try and keep it in the middle. Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's just look at this question quick. Um, 2y plus x equals 8, that's your first equation. 1 plus y equals 2x, that's equation 2. We're going to solve for x and y. Uh, okay, so this one is pure algebra. We're just going to hammer ourselves through it. Okay. Zoom out a bit. And uh, question 1.3. I'm going to rewrite those equations again. I'm going to try and stay in the middle. Uh, 2y plus x is equal to 8. That's equation 1. Uh, 1 plus y equals 2x2. Two. Now, there's, there's a whole bunch of ways I could do this, um, depending on the order in which you substitute it, things in. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at equation 1 first, and I'm going to say from equation 1, okay, I can write x as 8 minus 2y. I've subtracted 2y from both sides. It's the same as taking this over, it becomes negative. I subtract it, okay? Okay, and now I've got this expression for x, which I'm going to substitute in here, straight into equation 2, right? So substitute. into 2. And I'm going to rewrite that as 1 plus y is equal to 2. And then I'm going to write, not this, but I'm going to write this in brackets, 8 minus 2y. Okay. I'm going to expand those brackets. 1 plus y is equal to 16 minus 4y. Happy with that? And then <clears throat> I'm going to collect some of these terms, right? So I'm going to take all of the y terms over here. I'm going to over here, and I'm going to take all of the non-y terms over here, okay? So to do that, I'm going to keep this y here, and I'm going to take the plus four, uh, the minus 4y from the right becomes plus 4y. I'm going to have the 16, I'm going to say, take this one over here, that's minus 1, okay? Uh, that's 5y equals 15, and that means that y is equal to 3, okay? Only half the job there. I've now got to put that back into my original expression for x. We'll call it this one. And solve for x. Let's do that. <clears throat> <clears throat> x is equal to 8 minus 2y, which we've determined to be 3, which means that x is equal to 8 minus 6. x equals 2. There you go. Brilliant. OK. Let's see if we can get to question five, and then we'll have a break. I'm going to have a glass of water, OK? <clears throat> uh, nope. Where am I going? Let's have a look. Not that one, not that one. Here we are. Question 1.4, OK? This is a wordy question. about the number of meerkats and otters in the zoo. And it is actually a simultaneous equation in disguise. It's really important that I get you to know how to do this because no one really, um, at this point in your illustrious careers, is going to ask you to solve a simultaneous equation by just giving you some expressions. It's going to be context-driven. They're going to be otters. They're going to be meerkats. Um, they might be you know, a whole bunch of other animals or other contexts as well, OK? Um, so let's read the question. The total number of meerkats and otters in the zoo is 48. That's one bit of information. In other words, that's equation one, right? And the ratio of meerkats to otters is one to five. How many of each species are they? Okay, so we're essentially solving X and Y, where the number of otters is X and the number of meerkats is Y. Okay, so let's actually write that down. <clears throat> Oops, 
always do that. I'm gonna. How do I do that? There you go. We got it. Question 1.4. Um, right. Let's write this out sensibly. Let's call the number of meerkats M, and let's call the number of otters um, O. And I'm going to put a thing through it so we know it's not a zero. OK. Right. The first part of the question, if you remember, it said the total number of meerkats and otters in a zoo is 48. M plus otter equals 48. Equation one. OK, the second part was a bit more complicated. The ratio of meerkats to otters is one to five. OK, so I'm saying the ratio of meerkats to otters is equal to one to five. Ooh. Not quite in a form we want it, right? Um, if I give anything as an uh, as an expression in as a ratio, if I express anything as a ratio, um, that is the same as saying m over that is equal to one divided by five. That's the trick for this question, right? So that is equation two, right? So exactly the same as I did before. It's a bit tricky because I've got this fraction instead of a nice linear bit now, but I should be able to do exactly what I did last time. So what should we do first? Um, let's solve for M, shall we? So from this, from one, one, I'm going to rewrite M is equal to 48 minus the number of otters. <clears throat> and I'm going to subs, oops, subs that into straight into two okay so i'm going to rewrite equation two using this so 48 minus the number of otters divided by the number of otters is equal to one to five one over five okay now this looks very very familiar um, i'm going to separate this by doing 48 over otters minus otters over otters this of course Becomes one. No, that's awful, isn't it? One. And that's still one over five. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to collect the terms that I need on the left hand side in terms of otters. So I'm going to keep the 48 over otters and I'm going to have, I'm going to take the one over to the side by adding it. And that is equal to, uh, this that's the same as one over five plus five over five which is six over five, okay? Let's just write that out quickly. 48 over the number of otters is equal to six over five. Now, I could do this and then this, okay? And then I could rearrange, or I could just do the simple trick that as long as I do the same thing to both sides, I can get away with it, right? So I'm gonna flip the numerator and the denominator on both sides so I get the number of otters on the top, OK? Um, so I'm going to rewrite this as 48 equals to 5 over 6. And I'm allowed to do that. I've done the same thing to both sides, right? And now I can solve for the number of otters. It's 5, 6 multiplied by 48. Um, I'll let you do that on the calculator, but my answer is... 40. Everyone get 40? 48 times 5. Yeah, sounds about right to me. <clears throat> and then I can just use this expression. M is equal to um, 48 minus number of otters to give me m is equal to 48 minus 40 which means that the number of meerkats they must be is eight boom boom otters meerkats so you've solved the simultaneous equation based from a completely wordy question okay right what number was that okay we'll do 1.5 
And then I'm going to get a glass of water if that's okay. You guys can sit tight. Right. Take off that. Question 1.5. Let's have a look. Right. So this one might be relevant to some of you this week. Um, nine students go out for a meal to celebrate one of the students' birthdays. In the restaurant, each student puts the same amount of money on the table to pay for the meal. They all agree that the person whose birthday it is doesn't have to pay. Isn't that nice? The bill is £174. That's a cheap dinner, right? Uh, and they agree to leave a 10% tip. How much money does each student need to put on the table to the nearest whole pounds? Mm. OK, so this isn't actually that complicated. It's not a simultaneous equation. Um, it's just a case of, you know, getting this right in your head. Again, I'm sure some of you can do this standing on your heads, but let's do it anyway. Uh, let me scroll down here a bit. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate exactly how much in total we have to put down, right? So that is... Let me get rid of that a sec. So that is... Um, Total is equal to 174 pounds, zero, zero pence, plus a 10% tip. OK, so that's 0.1 in fractional terms multiplied by 174 pounds, zero, zero. OK, I get a total of 191 pounds 40. That's how much we've got to put on the table now. To find out how much we each have to do, it's pretty straightforward. There are nine of them, nine of us. Um, one ain't paying. So um, for each person, um, i got to put down £191.40 divided by eight, not by nine. I do that, I get an answer of £23.93. I have asked you to do it to the nearest pound. Um, so that's going to be... 24 pounds okay that one wasn't that bad was it okay right get up stretch your legs get a cup of tea um i'm gonna get a glass of water i'll be back in about two minutes okay right <clears throat> I'm just going to turn the camera off. I can pick my nose then if I want. Uh, I'll take my bike off as well, so you don't hear me say stupid things. Like
Okay, I'm back. I'm trying not to get riled by Andy's comments there. Maintain professional at all times. Um, okay. Right, let's crack on. Uh, let's see if we can get this done before the hour's out. I know it's a two-hour webinar, but uh, we want to go home, right? Um, so question 1.6. Let me just get that over here. Is a question about alcohol. Um, we always have questions about alcohol. Um, we're not trying to insinuate anything about you guys, uh, but let me read the question. Uh, Tom drinks three pints of beer um, containing 4.2% alcohol and two shots. One shot is equal to 25 milliliters of whiskey containing 40% alcohol. Uh, how much, sorry, I'm reading Andy, Andy's comments. Thank you, Andy. How much alcohol does Tom consume in milliliters? Express your answers to three significant figures. Right. Um, so a couple of things to worry about here. I've asked you to express how much Tom consumes, of, how much alcohol Tom is consuming in milliliters. Um, I've given you the shots in milliliters, but I've given you the pints in pints. So you're going to have to convert uh, from pints into milliliters, which means you're going to need to know exactly how many milliliters are in a pint. Um, I know that. That might be worth a quick Google, though. Um, I'll let you do that. Uh, let me just write this out. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to Google it. I haven't written it down either. 568. There are 568 milliliters in a pint. Okay. Right. So let's write this out. Question uh, 1.6. Okay. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to calculate the total amount of alcohol that Tom has consumed. Oh, how do I get back down? iPad stopped working. There you go. Go on. Go on. There you go. Uh, so let's call the total amount of alcohol X. OK, that is equal to um, how many pints is he drunk? He's drunk three pints of beer. OK, now how many milliliters are there in a pint? 568, right? Plus he's had two. Um, 25 milliliter shots. And actually, that's not the total of alcohol. I've got to multiply this by 0 0.042. Sorry, I didn't write that out very well. I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.40. Um, that's, this is the strength of the whiskey. This is the strength of the beer. Okay, And I've converted it from a, from a percentage to a fractional form. Okay. Uh, so let's do that in the calculator, and you should get a value of 91.568 milliliters. Uh, I'm just going to write that to three significant figures. Okay. And what I would like to do, sorry, that's milliliters, right? So that's a volume. I would like to convert that to grams, OK? Convert x to grams, OK? Now, I gave you one last piece of information, which was that alcohol has a density of 0.789 grams per milliliter, OK? So to get from milliliters to grams how what am i going to do what do you think i should do here of course someone be brave someone be brave please <laughs> you can type it you can say it what should i do with those two values together to get from milliliters to grams anyone there Anyone paying attention? Multiply. Thank you, Annie. Yes, Annie and Cara straight in there. Brilliant. I'm not alone. That's great. So, yep, I'm going to do X times the density is equal to 91.6 times by 0.789. You should get a value of 72.3 grams too. 
uh, three significant figures. Thank you, uh, Annie and Cara, for justifying my existence. Right. Next question. Oh, oh, it keeps doing that. My fingers are not working. Let's go and take a look over here. At question 1.7. Oh, I said they will meet Tom again in week three. OK, what we're actually going to do in week three is a, uh, a linear equation related to Tom. And we're going to see how quickly his body can uh, metabolize that alcohol. OK, so keep an eye on Tom. Question 1.7, 60% of prey item. Now, this had a, I had a few questions about this one. People got a bit confused by the triple ratio. Um, I don't think it's in the book, actually. Uh, question 1.7, 60% of prey items eaten by bats are moths, 20% of fruit flies. Express, express the ratio of moths and fruit flies in the bat's diet. Also express the, that, the bat's diet as a triple ratio of moths, fruit flies, and other insects. Assume that the bats only eat insects. Right, okay. Okay, let's just write that out. I have said, oh, hang on, here's my pen. Question 1.7. I've said the ratio between moths and fruit flies is 60 to 20. Okay, I can divide both sides of that ratio by 10 and express that as 6 to 2. I've got another common factor there, which is two, which means I can divide both sides by two to get three to one. OK, so that is my ratio of the number the, the moths and fruit flies in uh, the bat's diet. Now. The second part of the question was to express. Um, what the bat eats in terms of the triple ratio of moths, fruit flies, and other insects, assuming that bats only eat insects, OK? Um, so I've told you that 80%, uh, so, so 60, I've given you 60% plus 20 is the diet of moths and fruit flies, which means that another 20% must be other insects, OK? Moth plus fruit flies. So <clears throat> I want to express this triple ratio of moths, fruit flies, and other insects. OK, so it's the same. Essentially, you had 60% moths, 20% fruit flies and another 20% other insects. If I go through that same exercise, as long as I do the same thing to every part of this ratio, I can simplify it. OK, so again, I can divide everything by 10 to get a six by six to two to two. And I can divide by two again to get three to one to one. That's the triple ratio. It was that straightforward. OK, I think I confused a lot of people with that one. Apologies. Uh, let's move on. Nearly there, guys. Question 1.8. Let me read that one for you. Oops. OK, I like this one. I didn't write this one. One of the, one of the demonstrators wrote this for me. Um, when the golden puffer is threatened, um, it inflates to a sphere like shape with radius 0.24 meters. Like that, right? OK, uh, estimating the shape as a perfect sphere. OK. Calculate the volume of the inflated gold puffer in meters cubed and also express this volume in centimeters cubed. OK, so this is a good one because it's going to calculate. It's going to get you to calculate something based on the equation. The equation is the, the, um, the volume of a sphere, which you don't need to know. I'm going to give you um, and also you're going to get that answer in meters cubed, but I'd like you to convert it to centimeters cubed. OK, so it's a two parter. So let's do that. Right, so you got a puffer fish, um, golden puffer. I'm not going to try and draw it. I'm just going to draw a sphere of radius R, and I told you the radius is 0.24 meters. Right, volume of a sphere. Anybody? Four pi R 
cubed, that's important, over three, okay? Um, don't need to remember, although why wouldn't you remember it? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to plug the numbers in. So I know what R is. That is 0.24. I'm just going to plug it in and get the volume of that fish in meters cubed. Let's do that. Volume is equal to 4 pi. 0.24 meters was the radius cubed all over 3. And if you do that, you are going to get a value of... Do -do -do -do, where is it written down? I haven't got a calculator in front of me. No, point 0.5. I'm going to write, oh, hold on. No, point 0.05. 79058 meters cubed. If you do it on your calculator, you'll get that, that long answer, right? Now, that's not really appropriate that we write it that way. Andy, I'm sure if you're still listening, you have something to say about this. You'll be telling them about this on uh, Monday. Um, the original, I should express this to a correct number of significant figures, right? Now, what is the correct number of significant figures? What is the appropriate number of significant figures I should use in this case? That totally depends on the numbers I am plugging into this equation. So I've got my radius R. Would anyone like to tell me how many significant figures this value has? Go on. Two. Thank you, Annie. It's got two significant figures, the two and the four, right? So really, um, I should be expressing my answer to two significant figures as well. OK, so would anyone like to express this? To two sig fig. Somebody have a go at that. Go on, 0 0.057905 expressed to two significant figures. What would that look like? <clears throat> Thank you, Jasmine. Yes, correct. 0.058. Yep. So if your number's less than zero and you've got another zero on the other side here, you can ignore that one and you just pay attention to the first two significant figures which are these two here okay now because you've got one two you've got to round um because you look at the number after it and you round up always okay there are some things on there which says if this is an even number you should round down if it's not a number you should round up don't pay attention to that always round up okay um, if the number is greater than five five or greater so if that was a, a four this nine was a four it would be 0 0.5, 0 0.057. Makes sense. Um, so, yeah, that was correct. And the units were uh, meters cubed uh, to sig fig. OK, right. That was the first half. I want to convert this to um, centimeters cubed. Right. OK, now this is always, people always struggle with this every year. I'm sure you guys can do it, um, but I do it. I, and I don't know whether it's because I have a different background, um, but I always do this in a way that completely confounds everybody. So um, when you see Andy do this in his lecture, I, I thoroughly recommend you, uh, you remember how to do it that way, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you how, how I do it. Um, to begin with, I know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, okay? And then I know that one meter cubed is equal to 100 centimeters cubed, and that is equal to 100 times 100 times 100 centimeters cubed. That's one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. That's a million. I can also write that as 10 to the 6 centimetres cubed. Oh, scroll up a bit. Okay. So if I know 
that the volume of my puffer fish is 0 0.058 meters cubed, okay? And there are uh, 10 to the 6 centimeters cubed in a meters cubed. I can rewrite that as 0 0.058 multiplied by 10 to the 6 uh, centimeters cubed, okay? And if you do that in your calculator, you get a value which essentially is just a million times bigger, which is uh, five eight zero 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 centimeters cubed. Okay, so I've converted meters cubed to centimeters cubed. Right, question nine is an extension of this, but we're going to do it with two units simultaneously. Okay, so question number ten. Um, <clears throat> a cheetah starting a rest can accelerate up to a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. Given that a cheetah can weigh 70 kilograms, for that perspective, I weigh about 80. Okay. Uh, calculate the kinetic energy needed to reach this speed and use the appropriate prefix. So I've got this cheetah starting at rest. They're going to start to accelerate and they're going to get up to their their final speed, their maximum speed of 120 kilometers per hour. I don't care how long that takes. Um, I care how much energy it takes, right? And of course, there is an equation that governs how much kinetic energy energy, energy um, something moving at a constant speed has. Some of you may know this already. Oh, did I skip 1.9? Oh, well, I thought this day was getting shorter. Um, OK. Let's go back and do 1.9. Thank you, Hannah. We'll get back to the teacher in a second. Yeah, I want to do 1.9 first because it's sort of related, OK? Apologies. OK, question 1.9. Um, measurements for, for human bone density range from uh, 1,500 kilograms per meters cubed to 1,900 kilograms per meters cubed. Convert this range to grams for centimeters cubed. So you've got two conversions to do here. You've got to convert kilograms to grams, and you've got to convert meters cubed to centimeters cubed, just like we did in the previous question, right? So let's do that. And there are two values. There's, an, there's, a, there's a, this range of 1,500 to 1,900, OK? So let's do that first, um, right? Uh, question 1.9. Uh, Right. Um, let's start with the lower range, lower limit uh, of 1,500 kilograms per meters cubed. OK, per meters cubed is the same as me saying kilograms over meters cubed. Yeah, and that's a density. OK. Right. And I want to get this, these units here. I want to convert to grams per centimeters cubed, which often is a much more appropriate unit to use because the numbers involved are smaller. Maybe easier to write, basically, because we're lazy. We want to write as few numbers as possible. Um, so let's do that. OK, what's the first thing we should do? Let's convert kilograms to grams. So one kilogram, I know, is equal to 1,000 grams, right? So if I rewrite this, I can do 1,500 kilograms per meters cubed is equal to 1,500. I plug that in instead of the kilograms, right? Times by 1,000 grams. And don't forget, you still got the per meters cubed on the end of that as well. That's equal to one, two, three, four, five. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the six. Okay, I've just written it in standard form, or you can write it out as 1.5, uh, one and a half million. Okay, that's grams per meters cubed. Right, grams per meters cubed. Okay, now for the tricky bit. Now I know we in the last question. Um, 
we did convert from meters cubed to centimeters cubed. And we, we worked out that in one meters cubed, there is a million centimeters cubed. OK, but I need to work out m to the minus three. That's equal to one over m cubed, uh, which is one. In this case, I can just do one over this. One over 10 to the six meters cubed. Uh, uh, centimeters cubed, sorry. OK. Which is equal to one over 10 to the six centimeters per centimeter cubes. Right, so I'm going to stick this in this, OK? So 1.5 times 10 to the 6 grams per meters cubed is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the 6 centimeters cubed. Isn't that neat? They cancel. So your answer, oh, I missed out the gram. Your answer is 1.5 grams per centimeters cubed. That is the density in units of grams per centimeters cubed. What about the upper range, upper limit? Uh, the upper limit was 1,900 um, kilograms per meters cubed. Um, that is going to be uh, again one nine hundred, right? Times a thousand divided by ten to the six. Um, that is one point nine grams per centimeter cube. Ta -da. Okay, right. Back to that cheetah. Uh, one point ten. Okay, so this cheetah. Um, how much does he weigh? 70 kilograms. His top speeds is 120 kilometers per hour. Perfectly reasonable unit. Um, if you're European, we might have used miles an hour if it was a British cheetah um, or an American cheetah for that matter. I want to calculate the amount of kinetic energy it has when it reaches its top speed. In other words, I want to know, I've asked, how much energy does it take to go from a standing start to 120 kilometers per hour? OK. Right. There's an equation. There is always an equation. OK. I do not expect you to remember it. You, some of you might recognize this from school. The energy of a body moving at constant velocity is E equals a half mv squared. That's the amount of kinetic energy. Right, it has. It didn't have any kinetic energy to begin with because it was, it was standing still. So the total amount of energy it takes to go from 0 to 120 must be the total amount of kinetic energy it's gained. That makes sense, right? Now, this is the tricky bit. What's the SI unit of energy? Someone would like to tell me what the SI unit for energy is? Just check your listening. Joules. Thank you, Hannah. The unit is joules. OK, <clears throat> now in this context, we can express the SI unit of joules in terms of a number of other SI units, OK, namely length. And velocity, which remember is um, length per time per unit time squared. Okay, so let me just write that out. So there's a bit of dimension asked this year, and again, um, I'm a physicist, so I go nuts for this stuff. Um, but if what I'm about to write is confusing, um, Andy's going to fix you on Monday, I hope. Okay, so let's look at the dimensions of this. I've got a unit of length, which the SI unit, sorry, a unit of mass, which the unit for is. Uh, kilograms. Oh, that was very naughty. Use a capital K, small k. Otherwise, it's uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and I've got v squared. Okay. Now the units of velocity 
are meters. That's a unit of length. That's the SI unit for length. And it's per time. Meters per second is the unit, the SI unit for time. And that's all squared. OK, so I can express this in terms of these SI units, which will have kilograms per meters squared per second squared. OK, now this is what my answer is going to be. These two are the same, so I can either I can either express the amount of energy and I can say it has this much energy. It has this much kilograms per meter squared per second squared. Or I can just say joules, right? Has this many joules. Now, looking at these and looking at these, the only really units there which are not SI is the hour. OK, um, and of course, the kilometer as well. Sorry. So the kilograms fine. Uh, that is my SI unit for weight, but I need to convert my, my speeds, my final velocity into units that are compatible with my energy. OK, so let's do that. The first thing I need to know is how many meters in a kilometer. Well, we know that one kilometer equals a thousand meters. OK. Um, so let's rewrite that. V is equal to 120 kilometers per hour, which is equal to 120 times 1,000 meters per hour. OK, I feel that so far. That's um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 1.2 times 10 to the 5 meters per hour. Right. Here comes the tricky bit. How many hours, sorry, how many seconds are in an hour? Um, because I want to use the seconds, remember, not the hours. Well, how many seconds are in a minute? 60. How many minutes are in an hour? Another 60. So we have 3,600 seconds in an hour. Let's rewrite this velocity. It's equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 5. Now, that's hour, 1 over hour is equal to 1 over 3 600 seconds, right? So I'm actually going to divide by 3 600 here. That's going to give me units of meters per second. And that is equal to, I don't know, let's have a look. 33.3 uh, meters per second. OK, should have write that to three six fig. OK. Three six fig. Nearly there, nearly there. Right, so I've worked out the velocity. And I know what the mass is which means I can now use this equation to calculate the total amount of kinetic energy that Tita has. Uh-oh, low battery. OK, so E is equal to a half mv squared, which means that's a half times the mass, which is 70 kilograms. I'm using the right, I'm using the SI unit, multiplied by 33.3 meters per second again si units all squared do that on your calculator you are going to get 389 hundred joules or kilograms meter squared per second squared what would be an appropriate prefix anyone know what i mean by that someone give me a prefix for that and rewrite the number. Does that make sense what I'm asking? <laughs> if you're not sure what I'm asking, just put a question mark in the chat bar. Ah, Shensai, thank you. OK, what about in megajoules? Give it to me in megajoules. Be careful with your um, 
your kilo there, Shensai. Don't use a capital K, use a lowercase g. Don't ask why, it's just the way it is. K is a U, capital K is a unit of temperature called the Kelvin. So if you'd written it as, this is me being really pedantic now as a physicist, right? If you'd written it as cap, K, K, J, that's Kelvin joules, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Megajoules with a capital M is perfectly fine. Um, and you are absolutely right. Um, oh, are you? yes, absolutely right. 0 0.0389 megajoules. OK. Thank you, uh, Shinsai. Right, we're done. Um, oh, an hour and three. That wasn't too bad, was it? So thanks for this. Thanks for uh, doing the first ever webinar. These are going to be um, less frequent until week seven when we start to learn code. In future, you're actually going to be doing um, the workshops. Obviously, there's no workshops this week. So what we'll be doing is you'll be attempting the questions. And it's obvious you've attempted the questions. That's great. And uh, then the following Wednesday will be essentially me doing this, but in a lecture theatre. And again, we'll record it um, and do it that way. So thanks for staying with me. Any questions before I go? If not, thumbs up and I'll see you uh, next week. <clears throat>